What's up everybody? It's your boy DWS and I'm back with another video and today I'm going to be telling my first story time and you guys get to see this exclusive when you come to my channel. I cannot believe it. My channel has came a long way from having no videos to having two videos. Count it, two videos. All right, that's not that much. I understand that. I need to upload a little more. Every week is all right. Every two weeks, maybe, and sometimes every month. But doing it every day, I don't know if I could do that. The editing process is so grueling. Sitting down in that chair for hours and hours on end, it is not good. I wish I had one of those desks that lift up so I can stand and do my editing, but I don't. I have to do my editing on this laptop, which is stuck right there. Did I say laptop or did I say desktop? Actually, it's my desktop, my desktop. Yeah, that's right. I got a laptop, but I never do that for editing because my desktop has more speed, it has more RAM, I can render things a lot quicker. The editing is a big issue. Let's move on to what we are here for today, which is my first story time. And today I'm gonna to tell you a story about when I was 14, 15 years old. But before we do that, I want you guys to remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Now, if you notice the subscribe button is red right now, but when you push that subscribe button, it actually turns this color. That's right, it's actually gray. Then you'll see a white bell show up. This white bell is the post notification bell. When you push it, you'll see that the, it looks like some things, those are sound waves actually coming from the bell. It's emanating from the bell, so that tells you that it's, on basically it's active the post notification is active all right you guys get it enough with that okay so i'm gonna tell you about my first gang fight in school it was traumatizing to say the least very very traumatizing i think it was traumatizing i guess i should start off with the description of my school and what school i went to I went to a very huge high school. It covered four city blocks, two swimming pools, a huge gymnasium where we used to host basketball games. It had three lunch rooms. The lunch rooms was open third, fourth, and fifth period. Some students would be in their third, fourth, and fifth period. Personally, when I didn't want to go to class, I just sat in the lunch room for all three periods. Some weeks I was in the lunch room so much. I didn't have to eat dinner. Boy, get out of here. You had lunch at fourth period. Oh, that was me. My mother knew I was cutting because I would just go home and lay down. I was tired from eating all those meals. I was going to eat. I guess it had to be huge primarily because it was the only high school for the entire city. Every high schooler in the city went to this specific school. Windows. It had a lot of windows. Windows everywhere. It was a window on every building. It was a window in every classroom. They even had windows on the roof. They did. They had windows on the roof. Don't ask me why. They had sunroof windows to give you the feeling that you were on the road. I, I have no idea. When architects put huge windows in buildings, they're attempting to bring in more sunlight, which is said to make everything good in the place that you are at. There was nothing good about this school. The school was so bad that the bus drivers were too afraid to stop in front of the school. They used to slow down and just kick you off. The school had a metal detector at every single entrance. If you didn't have a gun, they would give you one. Nah, I don't believe it. I'm just kidding. The truth is, is that the people who sold guns at the school used to wait by the metal detectors and any student that did not have a gun, they would sell them one. It hosted a huge black market. You could buy anything from sex to guns at this school. Now we already talked about the guns part. Now what about the sex part? You had girls selling sex behind the bleachers. When the girls was caught behind the bleachers, it was because they were exchanging money for sex and that's just what they did. You couldn't get no sex for free. That just was out of the question. Books, you can buy books on the black market. I don't know how they were getting these books until one day I was one of those students who forgot my combination lock and I used to have to have the maintenance man come in to take it off or cut it off my locker. And I left my books in there and they got stole. I had to buy my own book back. I mean, literally, like I opened up the book, my name was right there in the book. I had to carry a book bag full of books. I was not leaving my books at that school. It's out of the question. You just didn't do it. You can buy drugs of any kind, weed, 
pills, crack cocaine. And yes, there were kids in the school that actually smoked crack. I'm smoking crack, Mr. Sams, there's no mistake. I can't believe it. You smoke crack, don't you? you? Smoke crack, don't you? I can't believe this, but. Look at me, boy. Don't you smoke crack? Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. That was horrible. The school didn't have cliques, it had gangs. There was a fight almost every single day. Nobody got suspended. Teachers knew that most of the kids didn't want to be there anyway. Sometimes these fights were a ruse to get suspended. The students would beat up the science teacher just to get expelled. And the teachers, do not let me get on the teachers. I guess you can't say it was the teacher's fault. Many of these teachers did have master's degrees. They weren't qualified to teach something, just not the subjects they were put in. The school district, in order to meet student-to-teacher ratios, would just throw teachers in classrooms they weren't qualified to be in. You show up for gym one day and your gym teacher is 500 pounds and can barely walk up the stairs. Our math teacher had a master's in arts degree. We didn't learn how to do no math, but we certainly did learn how to write our numbers in calligraphy. But the district ended up teaching to what the teachers knew rather than what the students were supposed to be learning. People would graduate with high school diplomas and didn't even know how to read. They would learn to read in prison. The teachers knew they were accepting salaries for jobs they couldn't actually do. But when you ask a teacher why the kids ain't learning, first thing they do is blame the community and the parents. There's violence all around their communities. They come from abusive homes. How can a child learn around violence? Are you kidding me? Black kids love drama. Don't let a fight happen outside their window. They flocking towards the window or the fight. I love this one. The parents are on drugs. The parents are drug addicts. They're smoking that chronic, those green leaves, that Lyle. What the hell that got to do with anything? You roll a blunt, you send the kids off to school, you smoke it. You air the house out when the kids come back home, you tell them to do their homework. Hell, even a crackhead know to send their damn kids to school. Drugs make you high. They don't make you stupid. For some of our kids, school is the only time they get a meal. Come on now, all these food stamps floating around here? You got middle class people on food stamps. Kids ain't starving. If they were starving, why would Michelle Obama be trying to make them skinny? These kids ain't going to school to get no meal. Probably for a few, but they still go. They come from abusive homes. The parents are fighting. Everybody got their own definition of abuse. When I got to the ninth grade, I was tired of going to school. By the time the 11th grade came up, it was almost impossible for me to go. The only way I got up is because I knew my mama was going to whack my ass upside the head if I didn't get out of her house. It's not us. Most of the children come from single parent homes from unwed parents and mothers. Our kids may be bastards, but they ain't stupid bastards. They knew they wasn't getting a good education. And so many of our classrooms look like this. Armed security guards, metal detectors, fights every single day. This was a horrible, horrible, horrible school. And I begged my mother to send me there. The school district managed to keep all of this information about the school from the parents. I don't know if this is a rule, but when you become a teenager, you stop talking to your parents. Parents did not know anything was wrong at the school because they never talked to their kids and their kids never talked to them. That's how it was. That's how it is. But it was one group of parents who knew what was wrong with the school, and that was parents who worked for the government. It must have been some sort of inside secret. It doesn't matter where you worked in the government. You could be the secretary for the mayor or you could be a police officer. You had this information. They all knew about this school. All of their kids went to private schools. Guess what my mother did for a living? Yup, she was a paramedic for the city. Bad. I couldn't stand going to that parochial school. It was boring. I wrestled in junior high school. I played football for the Muni League. I wanted to go to a school that had sports. That was one of the reasons I wanted to go was primarily because the sports. I did everything in my power to convince my mother to take me to this school. And every time, I got the same answer. No. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. 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 Hell no. 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 
I refuse. No, no. Tired of going to this boring old school. So after fighting with my mother about it, she gave in to the pressure. Yes, yes. Now it was time for me to make preparations. You should have seen me in my room practicing my cool walk. I was determined to swag in and swag out of that school every day. It wasn't long after I started going to this school that I met up with a cousin who I've never met a day in my life. He's like my third cousin. He had these tattoos all across his arm, all in Indian ink. I hit it off with him just like that. Cousin, friend, he became everything. We started to hang out. He was light skinned, I was dark skinned. People used to call us salt and pepper. If y'all don't remember salt and pepper, I'm too old. The more I learned about him, the more surprised I was. He was in a game. I had never been in a game before. This was intriguing to me to know a gang member. He would always try to encourage me to join his gang. He would invite me to meetings, introduce me to some of his brothers. And every time I gave him the same answer. No, no. Back then, I didn't see a benefit in joining the gang. It's not gonna make me a ladies man. It wasn't gonna put any money in my pocket. One day I seen my cousin do something with his hands. I was intrigued by this. I thought to myself, what is that? The hand movements are too organized for it to be gibberish. I got it. Sign language. So I asked him, where did you learn how to do sign language? <laughs> what? For all I knew, he had a deaf person living in the house. Don't laugh. If you didn't know anything about gangs, you probably would have thought that too. Anyway, he said, no, nah, man, this is called stacking. Stacking, what the hell is stacking? For all y'all guys that don't know what stacking is, I'm gonna post it right down here. Gang members used to throw up signs to support their gangs. This was an art form. I thought it was beautiful. I wanted to learn too. He used to teach me some things. Mines would never look as good as his. I used to practice stacking. I used to practice at home. I used to practice walking to school. And I used to practice in class. You guys probably know where this is going. One day I'm stacking in class and a guy walks up to me. Never seen him a day in my life. I don't know who he is. He asked me, what set you claiming? For one, I had no idea what the hell a set was or what I was claiming. He claimed a lottery ticket. Was I claiming my luggage? I don't know. I didn't respond right away because I was still trying to figure out what he meant by set I'm claiming. Then I got upset that he asked me the question in the first place. I responded to him in some sort of unkind way. It's none of your business what set I'm in. Yo, mind your beeswax, boy. He go, for real, kid? I'm like, yeah, that's what it is, that's what it is. So he goes, I'm gonna see you after school. I go, all right, I'll see you after school then. I ain't got no problems with that. I don't know what he thought. Niggas thought I was fucking pussy. Niggas thought I was pussy. Nigga, word to my flags, I'm not pussy, nigga. While I had no idea what I was throwing up, he did. And it roughly translated into this. What the fuck is you talking about, nigga? What's cracking, nigga? What's popping, nigga? What the fuck niggas thought this was, nigga? Before he left, he said, you a f Anybody that don't know what that is, that's a pejorative name for the opposing gang. I haven't mentioned so far what gang my cousin belonged to, and I'm not gonna mention that at all. And I also didn't tell you what school I went to. I don't want anybody to take their kids there. It was a horrible school. So anyway, I had known a guy named, what am I gonna get this guy's name as? Okay, we'll call him Blunt. Thirsty as all hell. I talked to Blunt, I had knew him for some years, and he also belonged to the same gang that my cousin was in. And I asked him, I said, well, what's going on with this guy? And he told me his name was such and such. He seemed sort of stunned. He was like, he the H and I C. H and I C. I didn't know what that was. He rushed off before he could tell me what the definition of H and I C was. After school, I'm walking down the courtyard. I see him sitting down next to a female in the front courtyard. He getting his back on, that's what it is. I noticed him before he noticed me. As I hit the edge of the wall, he looked up. He looked at me, I looked at him. He looked at me, I looked at him. He looked at me, I looked at him. It was like one of those old Clint Eastwood stare downs.
so I kept walking. He didn't do anything. I wrestled. I was a well-conditioned athlete. I wasn't afraid of nobody. I knew I could take it. When he didn't do anything, I knew then that he was afraid of me. You should have seen how crumped I was when I got home. Like, I had just won a battle at the OK Corral. I was happy when I got home. So I called my friend Blunt up. He doesn't answer my phone call. And I couldn't understand this because every time I used to call Blunt, he would answer his phone. But this one specific day, he didn't. So the next day I go to school, I'm looking for my dude Blunt, he used the in one of the lunch rooms, even though I didn't go in all the lunch rooms, I went in some looking for him. I couldn't find him. I wanted to let him know what happened after school and whatever trouble he thought I was in, I wasn't in. This guy had backed down, he wasn't gonna do anything, I wanted to brag. The bell rings, it's the end of the day. I'm walking down the courtyard, I see the guy again, but this time he's by himself. He's not sitting with a female like he was the first time or anybody else, he's just sitting there by himself. Instead of noticing me just as I passed him, he noticed me as I was coming down the walkway in the courtyard. And again, we had that same eye battle, that eye contact. You know that kind of eye contact that you have with somebody where you're looking at the pupils inside their eyes. This time, it was extremely uncomfortable. You can't show fear when you go to this school. I knew people that went to the school. I did my research, so I didn't show any kind of fear at all. I said, well, whatever. He was like, whatever? I was like, man, you can give me the 60 right here. We can go on the blacktop. I started taking off my book bag. As I started taking off my book bag, he stood up. When he stood up, 50 other people stood up with him. Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. No, no, no. Now, I don't know what y'all would be thinking at this time. I was pretty calm. The one thing you have to do is you have to stay calm. The main thing is not to panic. So I didn't panic. At this point in time, I'm thinking of contingency plans. What am I going to do to get myself out of this situation? Got it. That's all right. I'll casually make my way over to the doors. This way I'll be protected once I get inside. They got security in there. Just as I was thinking about the security protecting me, I seen the security guys drive past me. They were going home. Are you kidding me? You can't be serious. Really? It wasn't off until another five minutes. Ever since that one security guard died, two minutes before his shift ends, they all now punch out five minutes early. Great. So I plotted a path towards the doors. Okay, it's time to panic. All right, I know you guys are wondering why the video stopped there, but need not worry because part two is coming out. I actually am rendering part two now, but you guys will be able to get a chance to see part one and partly because the video was too long, and then the other part too is that I wanted to keep everybody in suspense. So if you're watching this, this is the end of the first part, and you guys have to tune in next week when I drop the second part of the story time, and I want you guys to comment down below. Uh, let me know what you think of this video, and if you're ready for part two. All right, everybody. Bye-bye.